Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to do a friendship reading, but this is the first time the Rev Loves have seen it. This friendship reading has a set um, layout and questions and everything that I have made for this reading. And this time, as you have read in the title, is going to be a friendship reading between Surki and Wendy. So let's just jump into the reading and get to figure out about their friendship. That was so hard to say. So, the first card that I'm going to take out is going to give me an idea or it's going to represent the type of connection that Wendy and Surgi have. So we have South Node, don't let your past hold you back. The next two cards that I'm going to take out is going to be to represent each individual. So first, Surgi. We have the Three of Cups. And the next card is to see which card represents Wendy in this connection. Okay, two came out. We have the Knight of Coins Reverse and the Eight of Cups. Alright. So to represent their friendship, we have South Node, don't let your past hold you back. So this m made me think that both of them probably have a type of relationship where they both look back into the past and maybe try to heal all of that, or if they're aware of it or not, I'm not too sure. There seems to be like the theme of moving forward or despite the difficulties of the past, trying to figure out how to move on from that because with the south node uh, in astrology it usually talks about um, maybe a past life of sorts it is usually to talk about the things that the baggage that we carry onto this lifetime so in this sense i do feel a type of connection that wendy and surgi have is one where they are they could be healing things from past lives as much as they could be he healing things from their childhood as much as they're now that they're older, it could just be anything related to their past that uh, has created some sort of baggage or has become a cycle in their current present time. And they're both, uh, it seems like the connection that they both have is one where they can heal each other and help each other out through all of that. Now the card that represents Surgi, we have the Three of Cups. So this tells me that uh, there's a sense of having fun, hanging out with friends, partying, celebrating, just being happy and feel with cheerful joy. So this tells me that Surgi is, in this connection, is the one that is usually happy, is the one that is usually trying to figure out how to have fun, is usually the one that is trying to figure out how to celebrate, or it is the one that tries to uh, stay optimistic and happy about the things, right? Because the Three of Cups is like hanging out with friends to, to just be happy. Now, with Wendy, the cards that represent her are the Knight of Coins and the Eight of Cups. So the one that seems to be doing more of the healing of the past is actually Wendy because that Eight of Cups is supposed to represent someone that makes a conscious choice of walking away from a situation or walking away from something that doesn't emotionally satisfy um, someone. And the Knight of Coins is usually uh, Virgo energy. Um, it is the energy of someone that is analyzing the situation, thinking things through, um, and being able to take things one step at a time. Doing progress even if it's slow and steady. So with the Knight of Coins reverse, it makes me think that uh, there's a sense of maybe Wendy's been distracted by her past or she can't focus and take action and constantly do things because something's constantly holding her back. So this Eight of Cups tells me that there's a lot of baggage that Wendy's trying to let go of in this connection. I'm not saying that Surgi was the one that caused all of that baggage that Wendy carries within her. Because this Three of Cups tells me that Surgi is probably helping Wendy out. And, you know, it kind of feels like Wendy has baggage to uh, clean and get rid of and work through. And Surgi is the one that's providing us a way an optimistic factor of sorts. The next card that I'm going to take out is just to see how does Surgi see Wendy. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so this Nine of Pentacles... Hold up, before I start 
talking about it. How does Wendy see Surgi? We have the King of Wands. Okay. So, with the Nine of Pentacles, usually when it's upright, we're talking about someone that is independent, someone that has a very good relationship with money, with their work, with their career, and with their health. So with it being reversed, I do feel that Surgi sees Wendy as someone that has to be taken care of, as someone that has a lot of work to do with the views and perspectives that they have with work. So what I'm saying is that maybe Wendy has a very unhealthy relationship with her work. Uh, you know those people that overwork themselves just to stay busy? Uh, that's the type of energy that I'm getting. So I wouldn't be surprised if Surgi feels like she has to take care of Wendy or feels like uh, there's still a lot of things that Wendy has to learn or there's a sense of despite all the things that Wendy is, Wendy doesn't feel independent or something like that. So I do feel that Surgi sees this part of Wendy that is like that has to be taken care of that a sense of having to provide somehow if that makes sense something something along those lines now the way that Wendy sees Surgi is as an individual that is very mature because we have a king of wands it is an individual that knows when to take action and how to take action. It is someone that is motivated and very passionate and knows how to use that in their favor. Instead of being reckless and impulsive, it is actually used in a way that can manifest as healthy action or just making dreams come true. Here we have Aries energy, so this tells me that when they see Sulgi as someone that is able to do what um, they desire and what they're passionate about and, and make their dreams come true. Almost, I'm thinking of like, Wendy sees Sulgi as a force to be reckoned with, right? It, it's kind of like when Sulgi has her mind on a goal or something, she puts all of her energy into it and seems and it seems like that's the impression that she has left on Wendy. The next card that I'm going to take out is just to see how the Sulgi and Wendy like to spend their time together. I use one one card, but all of them keep falling. Okay. So here we have New Moon in Gemini, communication is key. So it seems like the way that Wendy and Surki like to spend their time together is just by talking to each other, um, maybe texting each other, talking on the phone or in person, have very long conversations it feels or maybe having an intuitive co uh, communication with each other or self-expression so both of them are art are artists so maybe through the art that they use is a form of self-expression and that is a form that they like to spend their time together i mean they are co-workers and i do feel that both of them really do enjoy what they do as artists so i wouldn't be surprised if that's one of the ways that they love to spend their time together um but yeah, communication is key. Makes me think that both of them uh, really like when they have those deep conversations. Yes, and I also feel that they really like the surface level conversations. So small talk, we should put it that way. Or, or uh, meaningless banter of sorts or something along those lines where they can talk about something that's very lighthearted. Because we do have Gemini energy and Gemini energy is not necessarily known for its depth. For it is air and it is also mutable. It's also very quick energy, so it doesn't dwell too long on one topic or one conversation. So that tells me that they both like to spend their time just talking about um, their day or talking about the new things they have learned or stuff along those lines. Now, the next card I'm going to take out is to figure out how what Sugi likes about Wendy. We have Temperance Reverse. Okay, so... Seems like... Okay, I'll talk about it in a bit. What does Wendy like about Suzuki? We have the Knight of Swords Reverse. 
So what Sulgi likes about Wendy is I think Sulgi finds it very cute or ador adorable that Wendy seems to not have patience for anything or I think there's this sense of taking care of Wendy that Sulgi really likes um, because with temperance we're talking about someone that's impatient. When it's reversed, we're talking about someone that's impatient, someone that's out of balance. Uh, temperance is Sagittarius energy, so maybe someone that um, is still trying to figure out how to ground themselves again or how to be able to be in a perfect harmony and balance between two worlds, let's put it that way. And with it being reversed, I do feel that Sulgi really likes how... Um, Wendy is constantly working towards having that harmony in all of that. Or now that I'm seeing this, both of those cards being reversed, despite being very good cards, tells me that Sungi sees this potential in Wendy, but seems like Wendy's still not fully there yet. Like Wendy hasn't found her freedom and independence, or hasn't found her balance and a uh, healthy rel relationship with her sit house type of energy. Um, so work, routine, health, career, and all of that. So I do feel that Sulgi uh, sees all of this good potential in Wendy, but Wendy's still not quite there. On the other hand, what Wendy likes about Sulgi is the Knight of Swords reverse. So she likes that Sulgi is not reckless. She likes that Sulgi um, may struggle a little bit communicating um, effectively, but... I think they both kind of just understand each other because that's what they like to do anyway. Uh, but with this Knight of Swords reverse also, there is a sense of... Um, it seems like Wendy also likes how Sulki is able to... Um, I don't know what to say with this Knight of Swords. Because Knight of Swords usually is like, you know, don't be reckless. It's a mutable sign, so it's taking action very quickly. But with it being reversed, it will be like not going super quickly or not being reckless. So I do feel that maybe Wendy doesn't have very clear what she likes about Sugi. Like, like it's not uh, concrete. I do feel that it's more of a feeling rather than something that can't be expressed or talked about. It's more of like something that she just knows. But yeah, with this Knight of Swords reverse, I guess it's of those things that because um, I don't feel like Sunji is um, necessarily like slow uh, and that's why the Knight of Swords is reversed because the Knight of Swords is a very fast moving energy and with it in reverse it could be someone that is taking their time or someone that is um, does think things through before moving forward I'm not too sure it feels like one of the things that Wendy really likes about Sunji is that Sunji seems to not really care to be on her own to do things because if you look at the imagery of this card uh this individual has a bunch of birds surrounding him and going with him towards a certain goal but that's why with it reverse it kind of feels like uh wendy really likes how Sudi can just handle herself and do things on her own the next card that i'm going to take out is what has Sudi learned from wendy we have the five of pentacles but it, it kind of turned to be reversed, so that's interesting. What has Wendy learned from Sugi? Ow. We have the tower reversed. Okay, so from Sugi, the Five of Pentacles, one of the things that uh, Sugi has learned from Wendy is. Um, how to not be alone and how to reach out to people. So the Five of Pentacles upright usually talks about someone that feels left out on the cold, someone that feels abandoned, or someone that feels uh, that they're left out to survive and fend off for themselves. But with it reversed, it kind of feels that uh, Wendy came in like a, to help Sugi out somehow as well. And because of that, Sugi feels like she can rely on someone. She feels like she could ask for help. Uh, Sugi has learned how to communicate to others or how to work with other people better. Or Sugi has also learned how to um, not do things on her own when she's going through a very difficult and challenging time. Because the five of pentacles is, of course, number five. And five talks about challenges, difficulties, 
and I guess conflict a little bit of change to give individuals an extra push of learning and knowledge so with it reverse it definitely feels like Surgi has learned from Wendy how to ask for help and how to work with other people better. On the other hand, what Wendy has learned from Surgi is the Tower Reverse. So the Tower Upright usually talks about an epiphany or a sudden change that creates a domino effect of transformations and change. It is a period of destruction there to, um, in a way, clear the land and create a stronger foundation to build upon it again. So I guess you can say oh, a phoenix moment as well. I say as well because I usually use that metaphor for the death card. But in the tower, it is a similar meaning, I guess. And here we have Mars energy. Now, with it being reversed, I usually see this as uh, people that are trying to avoid their tower moment. Or despite the tower moment, it's very, very difficult. So an individual is having a moment of restraint and a very difficult time with this destruction of that the person has encountered. So with Wendy, it feels that the thing that she has learned about Sulgi is either to not be stressed out or afraid of big changes that the tower can bring. The tower can create um, big waves, I guess you could put it that way. Um, it can definitely destroy the structure or the foundation of whatever project or whatever journey Wendy has gone through. And I think one of the things that Wendy has learned from Suki is how to bring herself back up. Because when I saw the tower reverse, I actually didn't feel anything bad. So I don't think there's this sense, there's no, I don't feel resistance or I don't feel that the tower is being overbearing and super difficult and challenging for Wendy. It kind of feels that um, one of the things Wendy has learned from Surgi is how to um, face difficulties and challenges right on and has learned that sometimes those difficulties are bla blessings in disguise, right? If, if a project fails or it doesn't work out, is for a reason, is because there's something better out there or it wasn't the thing that was right for Wendy and so on and so on. So I do feel that Wendy has just learned how to be a bit more optimistic about things and has learned how to um, see things with, I guess, with optimism in a sense, I guess. And also how to work our way through that. The last card that I'm going to take out is going to tell me why the Tsurugi and Wendy meet. So two cards came out. We have Full Moon in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle approaches. And then we have New Moon in Leo, Confidence is your key to success. So this goes very well with the card that represents their connection, which don't let the, the past hold you back. But here we have Full Moon in Capricorn. So a full moon is usually the energy of coming close to the end of a cycle. It is the, I guess, a climax or the pinnacle of energy before the moon starts uh, going into a new moon. But yeah, it kind of feels that there's a sense of something ends and then there's this new beginning. Because New Moon talks about a new chapter, a new journey, and a new beginning. But yeah, with this full moon in Capricorn, it says the end of a tough cycle approaches. So of course, there's this ending uh, that has been very difficult. Which I feel that the difficulties that um, Sulgi and Wendy may have encountered could be things from their past. It definitely feels like... Um, baggage from the past. I don't think it's baggage that they have with each other. I just think it is baggage that they both have as individuals growing up, which could be traced back even to past lives. Um, so what I'm, when I say stuff from their past lives, I mean that it could be something that um, they're not even aware of, something that their soul has to heal. Uh, I guess like if you look at their Chiron placements, that could be one thing. So yeah, with the end of a tough cycle, it also feels that um, with this Capricorn energy, I'm thinking of Saturn. 
so it makes me think like the big life lessons that they have to learn is one of the, the reasons why they met they're going to help each other with that or giving each other the tools and knowledge necessary for both of them to heal what they have to heal on their own or for their mission also with this capricorn energy i'm getting a sense of they're learning they're learning how to let go of a rigid structure or let go of some sort of um, expectations that have been set on them or they're letting go of things related to their public image their work their career um anything that is put under the spotlight they were learning how to heal that and learning how to work with that and learning how to get rid of vicious cycles that have been made because of that um it seems like they're entering this new phase with this new moon and leo which is confidence is your key to success so they're learning how to become stronger uh and when i mean stronger i don't necessarily mean physically i mean mentally and emotionally they're learning how to be stronger so they're learning how to stay loyal to what they value they're learning how to stay loyal to what they're passionate about and the work that they're doing they're learning how to uh work against the mental blockages and the limiting beliefs they may have of i have to do this alone i have to do this on my own um or any re any feelings of being trapped and stuff they're one of the reasons they met was to help the other one um get out of mentalities that could hold them back it feels so yeah with confidence is your key to success i feel they help each other out and they have met to um in a way mirror to each other the strengths that the other one has and also um help each other use their own strengths to teach the other one how to take care of themselves and how to improve and how to be better and things along those lines also with the moon in leo leo is the energy of someone that is very optimistic someone that is okay to be under that spotlight and has a better a healthier time I guess a better understanding of the responsibilities behind that spotlight but also enjoys it more because Leo is the energy of someone that um, is okay with all the attention that is put on them um, and also they're very loyal to what they believe in and very loyal to what they practice so I do feel that if entertainment and if music and art is what they enjoy they'll stay and stick to it but they'll have a healthier relationship with the responsibility that comes by being under that spotlight so that's the reason why they met so with all of that said i hope you guys enjoyed this reading i thought this was very interesting uh it was kind of difficult to read for some reason um i guess wendy's energy is still pretty uh fussy or blocked at the moment and i think that's why or maybe it was just me i don't know um but then again i didn't really struggle reading for what Tobi had to say even though her cards were reversed and they were good cards so to me that was kind of like counterintuitive somehow right if you want to say something nice about someone why are these cards reversed but yeah anyway i'll leave that there i'll see you on the next one whenever that is thank you so much for watching and yeah love and healing from my part to you and bye.